got a marvelous show for you this evening. Aside from our regulars, Harvey Corman, Lyle Wagoner, and Vicki Lawrence, our special guests this evening, and I do mean special, are Steve Lawrence and Carol Channing. Okay, we got a great show tonight, so don't you go away. We'll be right back. From Television City in Hollywood. The Carol Burnett Show with Harvey Gorman. Vicki Lawrence and Lyle Wagon. Ladies and gentlemen, it's one of my favorite people in the whole world. He is multi talented Did you see him on Medical Center? He was terrific. He can carry quite a tune. Mr. Steve Lawrence. In my own lifetime To see the fighting cease in my own lifetime. I want to see my sons enjoy the fruits of peace. Why? We have climbed higher Much higher than I thought we'd climb Such a long journey And even though the end's in sight There's not much time We haven't built on side. I want to see the fighting sea. I want to see my sons enjoy the fruits of peace. Don't say. Go straight forward, about three steps. Pick up your foot, that's it, good. Okay, honey, we're in the room. Oh, you're beautiful. You're really beautiful. I'll never forgive you for this. You promised me that this was going to be our vacation and you bring me here. Honey, it's not my fault. Joe Shoren picked out this place. He and his wife come up here all the time. Who knew? You knew! You knew this place is a nudist colony! <laughs> now, I am getting out of here this minute! Honey, we can't go. Joe Shoren is one of my biggest clients and he expects to meet us up here. I'm telling you, don't you try to stop me! <laughs> well, hi there, folks. Hi. Welcome to Paradise Pie. Thank you. And I hope you like the cabin. It has a lovely view. Yes, it, it, it certainly is a pretty view. <laughs> well, there's 
lots of sunshine out there, folks, so don't you let it go to waste. No, we won't. Bye. You can turn around, honey. He's gone. Let's get out of here. Honey, please, trust me. Everything's gonna be all right. Roger. Would you just relax? Roger. Come on, honey, let's look around. Roger. Oh, shh. Hey, look at this bedroom, Carol. It's beautiful. Roger. Roger! Yeah, in a second, honey. Who, 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 who is it? No, no, please. Don't come in! You wouldn't like yours the back. Slip him under the door. Come on, lady. I ain't got all day. Open the door. All right, I, I'll open half. Wrong half! <laughs> just, just put it over the side. Just a second. I, I, I'm afraid all I've got is three nickels. Forget it, lady. I ain't got no place to put them. <laughs> Bags are here. Don't Good. you touch those. We're not unpacking. Darling, let's try it out for one day. No! We've got to. Joe Shorn is a very important man in my business. He sounds like an important weirdo. He's not a weirdo. As a matter of fact, this whole thing is probably his wife's idea. Oh, I bet she's a pip. I wonder what she's like. Who remembers? I only met her once. What? Who is it? It's me, Roger. Don't you let it's them. Are you decent? No, we still have our clothes on. <laughs> Be nice, Carol. Just a minute, Joe! Hang on, old buddy. Hi, how are you, Joe? Good You're to just see you. great, Roger. You remember the little woman? Oh. Of course, how could I forget her? Uh, how are you, Helga? Just fine, Roger. And uh, speaking of little women, this is my wife, Carol. <laughs> Hi there. So, we finally got old Raj up to Paradise Pines, huh? <laughs> yeah. But you're surprised, huh, Carol? Not anymore. <laughs> Yeah, well, we're old timers. Been coming up here for years. So. Oh, but it's always nice to see a new face. <laughs> Among other things. You know, I can't wait to get out in the fresh air and fill my lungs. <laughs> Don't tell me they're not full now. Hey, 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 what say we all get comfortable? Well, huh? thank you. I'm about as comfortable as I'm going to get. <laughs> oh, you're shy, aren't you? Don't feel that way. You're among friends here. You have nothing to hide. <laughs> That's why I'm shy. Hey, come on, folks. Yep. Time's a wasting. Okay. We'll see you later. Huh? Okay, Joe. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, about that uh, Ferguson deal. We have to get together and talk over the contracts. Okay? Want to do that, Joe? Okay. Well, honey, they seem nice. Don't you touch me! <laughs> Dark, I'm splitting, Charlie! Now, Carol! Oh, uh, Reggie, I can't wait to get out in the fresh air and fill my lungs. <laughs> Carol, please. <laughs> For heaven's sake. Now I know why you were so anxious to come up here. Honey, she's not the reason you oh, came yeah, up. Oh, yeah, and I suppose she's not the reason you brought your camera and 12 rolls of film. <laughs> I always bring my camera on vacation. with her, you won't need blow-ups. <laughs> You're being ridiculous. Now, come on, now, let's get undressed. Are you crazy? No one will even notice you. That's even worse! Oh, come on, Carol. Look, Helga's out there already. For heaven's sake. Don't you dare! Oh, no, I, I just want to see. I just want to see if Joe is with her. I want to talk to Call him. Call him up! Honey, be sensible, will you? This is my only chance to nail this thing down by talking to Joe all alone. Please, sweetheart, I don't want any interruptions. You no. please go out, talk to Helga. Give me five minutes alone with Joe. I won't do it. Honey, I please won't for me. You're being so uptight. It's so ridiculous. Look, there are 200 people out there without any clothes on. <laughs> Honey, it's perfectly natural. I, it's Mother Nature. I just don't think I can do it. Yes, you can, darling. Please, you can do it. Please, for I me, darling. Please, go ahead. Just. Honey, do I do I ask you things often? Not like do this. I, no. <laughs> Honey, this is really an important thing. I just go in there and take off your clothes. Just like that. <laughs> just like that, honey. Once you get used to it, it'll be fine. Go ahead, darling. That's my brave girl. I'll try. Okay. I can't do it. <laughs> Why not? There's something in there. What? A mirror. Oh, don't be ridiculous, please, darling. Go ahead. Just take off your clothes. All right. That's my sweet girl. That's it. Good, honey. Listen, if I close this deal, we'll, we'll go take a real vacation. Paris, South America, wherever you want to go. I don't believe this whole day. Hurry up, will you, Carol? Coming. Oh. <laughs> That's my sweetheart. That's a very good start. Now... <laughs> Now, just take off the towel, go out and find Helga while I talk to Joe, okay, darling? Yes, you can, darling. Just take off the towel. Come on. 
sweetheart, just take off the top. <laughs> Honey, when I count three, take it off. Be Seven. brave. Seven. Seven, all right. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven! <laughs> Better off! Quick! This is important. I don't want anyone fooling around. Don't fall! Don't fall! Now, come on. You go find Helga while I talk to Joe. It's breezy. Oh, come on. There's nobody around. You can take off your towel. Roger. What? If anybody laughs at me, I will never forgive you. Nobody's gonna laugh at you. <laughs> Must be an easier way to make a living. Hello? Give me Joe Shoren's cabin, please. Oh. This your wife, Mac? Well, yes, it is, officer. What's going on? The place is being raided. Raided? That's right. The license expired three months ago. Roger, I'll never forget this day as long as I live. You're not kidding. That's poison ivy. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. Oh, yes, Carol. I was just wondering if there might be anything special that you'd like me to say tonight when I introduce you now to the audience. Oh, no, Carol, just something simple. Oh, okay. You might throw in the words beautiful and warm and talented, yeah. lovable, uh, yeah. <laughs> darling, adorable, you know, you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, I get it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, beautiful, yeah. warm, talented, lovable, darling, <laughs> adorable person is happy to present Miss Carol Channing. <laughs> Jewels and fashion, I'm contemporary. But when it comes to music, I am not. The songs they keep writing are just a little scary. I long for simple ditties, sweet and hot, with tender words that rhyme like moon and June and spoon. Remember when we used to recognize each tune. to talk with <laughs> all by myself no one to walk with but I'm happy on the shelf ain't misbehaving I'm saving my love for you <laughs> I don't stay out late, don't care to go. I'm home about eight, just me and my little radio. Ain't misbehaving, I'm saving my love for you. <laughs> the salt my necessity I'd be lost without you you're the starch of my car you're the lady 
stomach turn. <laughs> when last we left Canoga Falls, Marion was just saying goodbye to her insurance agent. Now you just remember that you're in good hands. Oh, yes. I know you'll sleep better tonight. Oh, yes. Do you want to talk about accident insurance? That won't be necessary. I'm on the pill. <laughs> John. Oh, a widow's life is a lonely one. <laughs> More coffee. No, thank you, Marion, but you're a wonderful hostess. <laughs> wonderful, but weird. <laughs> Oh, don't bother, I'll get it. <laughs> Why, it's, it's Canoga Falls' former resident, Jinx Vandenberg, who was known as the bad luck lady because wherever she went, disaster followed. Come in. Marion, is that your car rolling down the hill? <laughs> I can only stay a moment. I'm glad. <laughs> Sit down. More coffee, Jinx. I'd love so. Well, I see you've redone the plays. Yes, 10 years ago, right after the fire. Oh, yeah. I was visiting.
seeing you that night. I know. Oh, what a cute little bird. Oh, what kind is it? <laughs> was it? Oh, dear. Don't worry. I'm, I'm sure that was just a coincidence, Jane. No, Marion. It's my fault. It's my fault. I seem to bring bad luck everywhere. I... Jinx, tell me about yourself while there's still time. <laughs> well, now let me see. When did I leave Canoga Falls? Oh, yes, right after the flood. Yes, we still talk about that. <laughs> and then I took a boat trip. What boat? The Andrea Doria. Of course. <laughs> and now here you are back in Canoga Falls. Oh, Jinx, I'm so unhappy. Oh, Jinx, Jinx, Jinx. Marion, Marion, Marion. Jinx, Jinx. Marion, Marion. Jinx. Marion. You know, Marion, you are so understanding. Everyone else avoids me like the plague. I'm not worried. Uh, I'll get it. <laughs> It's a teenage member of the new army. Come in, soldier. Don't you recognize me? Well, you do look familiar. Let me take a guess. I'm your daughter. Well, that certainly narrows it down, doesn't it? <laughs> I ran away from home and enlisted in the army. Oh, and you've already seen action. <laughs> Oh, Mom, the new army is just great. You know, we get four gourmet meals a day. Oh, there goes your diet. And we have color television. There goes your eyesight. And we even have co-ed barracks. There goes your good conduct medal. <laughs> well, Mom, I got a split now. We're going on a forced march, and I'll be on my feet all night. That'll be a nice change. <laughs> so long, Mom. Goodbye. The next time you see me, I'll have made corporal. I wouldn't be at all surprised. <laughs> Now, baby. Oh, oh, yeah. I remember. Wherever you go, tragedy follows you, Jinx. Have you never been happy? Only when I was married. You were married? Six times, honey. What happened? Well, let's see. There was heart, train accident, suicide, murder, lightning, and truck. Oh. You see this dress I'm wearing? This black dress, yes. Marion? Wash and wear. <laughs> poor, poor Jinx. It's too much, Marion. It's too much oh. for one woman to bear. Oh, you Jinx. Oh, thank you. Oh. Uh, thank you, dear. <laughs> no. Jinx, perhaps your bad luck is psychological. Oh, but, Marion, I've tried everything. Doctors, hypnotists, psychiatrists. No one can help me. There's one person you haven't tried. Who? You'll see. <laughs> Why, it's Sammy Swindell, Canoga Falls' leading faith healer. Come in. Thank you, Marion. <laughs> Hello, Sammy. Did you hear that? She said hello. Those of you who doubt, can you believe it now? <laughs> Before I came in, she did not say anything. But the moment I walked through this door, she said hello. She has faith in me, bless you, sister. Uh, who's your friend? Not a friend, but a passing stranger in need of my help. Come, my son, come. Look here upon this poor young boy. I will cure him if he has faith in me. Do you have faith in me? Yes, I have faith in you. <laughs> he has faith in me. This poor young boy has not walked in a year. A week. A week. <laughs> Did you hear that? A week with a shattered leg. A sprained ankle. A sprained ankle. <laughs> Did you hear that? And then the doctors tell you that you're never going to walk again. No. <laughs> you hide it with his own lips. I want you to do something for me, boy. Oh. I want you to throw away those crutches. 
Mm. I want you to throw away those crutches. Oh. You don't need to throw them away. I throw them away. That's it. Yeah. Now I want you to take a step. Oh. For me, have faith in me. Oh. Take a step. Oh. That's it, boy. Oh. You, you are walking. Oh. You are walking. I am falling. I am falling. <laughs> He is crawling, can you see it? He is crawling. I am leaving. He is leaving. Right before your eyes, he is leaving. He's gone. <laughs> now, sister, can you see what a little faith can do? This boy came in here with crutches and he left without him. <laughs> that's faith healing. I said that's faith healing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> bravo, bravo! Sammy, this is Jinx Vandenberg, who desperately needs your help. Oh. I feel as if I know you already. Oh, through my television show? Yes, I saw it just last night with Chubby Faith and the Healers, <laughs> the Young Miracles, and your special guest star, Henny Youngman. <laughs> it was inspirational. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now, what is your problem? Well, wherever I go, bad luck follows me. Then I will rid you of this curse. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to believe in me. I want you to believe in me. Have faith in me. The thoughts of bad luck are leaving your mind. I'm drawing them out. The curse is leaving your head. It's leaving your head. And it's in my hand. What the hell? <laughs> You should all know. What is it that Marion has to say? What about Sammy Swindell? Will his hand get better? Is it true that he's worth four million dollars? <laughs> and what about the passing stranger? Will he be cured? Or will they cut down his crutches for crawling? <laughs> <laughs> and what about Marion's GI daughter? Will she make a career of the army? Or is she just learning a trade? <laughs> and what about Jinx Vandenberg? Will she be cured so she can cancel her charge account at Forest Lawn? <laughs> and what about Marion? Will she find happiness with her insurance man? Or will he insist that she be fully covered? <laughs> For the answer to these and other silly questions, tune in tomorrow as the stomach turns. Stay tuned now for the second half of the Carol Burnett Show and our salute to Academy Award winning movies following station identification. what this is. It's called an Oscar, and it's the most coveted award in all of show business. And tonight we salute Oscar by bringing you some of the highlights from 32 years of Academy Award winning movies. In 1948, Barbara Stanwyck won an Oscar nomination for her performance as a terrified, helpless victim in the suspenseful film Sorry, Wrong Number. Hello, police department. You've got to help me. There's somebody out to get me. No, please don't hang up on me. I'm not a crank. I'm, I'm confined to bed and I'm completely helpless. I can hear the window opening in the other room. No, please don't hang up on me. You've got to help me. I can hear footsteps. They're coming closer. Closer. No, no, please don't hang up on me. Someone's opening the door to my room. No, please don't leave. No. I can see him. He's over six feet tall with huge shoulders. What'll I do? I tell you what, I'll call you back in the morning. <laughs> Some of the most dramatic moments in Oscar history have come not from the motion pictures, but from the Academy Award ceremony itself. And the winner for Best Actress is Jennifer Jackson. <laughs> We
winning an Oscar and finding out that I'm going to have a baby all in the same day. <laughs> Therefore, I shall be very brief and just say from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for my wonderful director, George Farrington, whose sheer genius was responsible for bringing out the enormous talent I had hidden inside me. Thank you, George. And, of course, I want to thank my producer, Harry Barton, who took a chance on a virtually unknown actress and made her the superstar that I am now. Thank you, Harry, darling. And, of course, I'm <laughs> In 1937, Paul Muni was awarded an Oscar for his portrayal of one of the world's greatest scientists in the story of Louis Pasteur. And now, if there are no other matters to discuss, I hereby adjourn this meeting of the French Academy of Science. No! Wait! Wait! You again, Louis Pasteur? <laughs> and what nonsense do you have for us today? No nonsense, monsieur. Gentlemen! I have made a most monumental scientific discovery. You? <laughs> yes, yes, me. <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, I have discovered a cure for rabies. <laughs> oh, please do not laugh, gentlemen, I implore you. I've spent the last 15 years of my life working on this experiment. I've gone without eating, without sleeping. I've slaved day and night to discover what I have here, what I have here on this slide. Yeah. Gentlemen, perhaps this is true. It will indeed be a boon to mankind, and as scientists, we must consider it. Therefore, I hereby call this meeting back to order. <laughs> My next thank you is a very sad one. It is for the man who wrote the brilliant screenplay for my movie, the late Dan Hargrove. Dan, I hope you're watching tonight. It was another one of those tragic coincidences that seemed to plague our industry. The very day it was announced I was to play the lead in his screenplay, he fell off a bridge in San Francisco. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, I'd like to thank Willie Westbrook, whose magic with makeup did so much to enhance my natural beauty. Thank you, sweetie. And of course, I must thank the man who made all this possible, Neil Ryan, my co-star and fiancé. <laughs> And of course, I'd be remiss if I didn't remember. In 1952, Humphrey Bogart won an Oscar for his performance in The African Queen. The movie was basically a love story between a seedy, hard-drinking riverboat captain and a prissy spinster missionary played by the incomparable Katherine Hepburn. Oh, Captain, I do wish you'd fix that engine. Really, I do. Sweetheart, just hold your horses. <laughs> this engine is dirty, and I mean dirty. When did that happen? The minute I touched it. <laughs> we'll never get off this river, I just know it. Never, never, really, we won't. There, there, Missy. Don't worry, take it easy. Oh, but I must get back to my village, and to my mission, <laughs> and to my laundry. <laughs> Sorry about that, sweetheart. Oh. What we both could use is a good stiff drink. Oh, no. No, Captain, please give up the demon rum. We missionaries constantly fight the evils of drink. Lift up your head, Captain, and let those spiritual feelings come forth. I'll drink to that, sweetheart. Hallelujah. No, give me that. The first thing you know, you'll get roaring drunk and start to tear and rip at my clothes and try to make violent love to me, won't you? No. Oh. <laughs> Give me that bottle, sweetheart. No, not a chance. Oh, Captain, Captain, we can't stay here. You must do something. You must. You're right, sweetheart. And I know just what I'm going to do. What? Give me that can of gasoline, sweetheart. Here. Cheers. Oh, no. How can you drink that? You know a better way to get gas? <laughs> oh, Captain, no. Hey, you're 
starting to look better to me already, sweetheart. Now you just keep away from me, Captain. Keep away. You don't fool me, Miss Rosie. There's a woman inside you. Really? Must be. It's not on the outside. <laughs> Don't, Captain, don't. I've never known a man's arms around me. I, I don't know what to do. I just don't know what to do. Oh, I'm torn. I'm torn. You're torn. I'm sorry, Captain. Look, Rosie, why don't we forget this nonsense? I'm a man and you're a woman, Rosie. No, no. I've led a sheltered life, a life devoted to teaching and to healing, a life of strict discipline. I've never known passion or love. I've often wondered what it would be like, but no, no. I must resist the temptations of the flesh. Then again, I must have missed them. Oh, how often I have thought of romance. How often I've thought of everything I wanted to know about love but was afraid to ask. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm weakening, I'm weakening. No, but I must. I'll continue on as always. My white band of purity held high, pledged forever to the idealism of honesty and virtue. No, no, you'll never get at me, Captain. I will never give in to hunger or longing or desire or ecstasy. <laughs> I will not yield. No! <laughs> I, I will fight your animal cravings. I shall remain steadfast. Oh, yes, but I shall remain steadfast. Yes, I will. Against your lustful urgings, never, never submitting to your wanton sexual appetites and your mad burning passions and your need to ravish and debauch. Say something, Captain, say something! <laughs> for you to say. <laughs> but I say something entirely different. I say no. No. Oh, Captain, you must stop forcing yourself on me like this. I will never, never submit. <laughs> I will repel your fleshy cravings. I will always remain pure in heart, untouched and untainted. And I will continue to defend the honor of my decency and my chastity. <laughs> Sweetheart, we gotta stop meeting like this. I, I will never, never give in to your hot-blooded desire, no. No, but alas, I am too weak. Oh, Charlie, Charlie, the answer is yes. What was the question? Oh, Charlie, Charlie, I am yours, and you are mine until the end of time. Imagine that, Rosie. A river rat like me finding love with a lady like you. Oh, yes, Charlie, yes. Yes. Oh, Rosie, you know I learned something from a lady like you. What, Charlie, what? This, Rosie, this. So I don't want to take up too much time, but do permit me one final thank you to the Motion Picture Academy who voted me this Oscar. There are over 2,000 members in the Academy, and they are alphabetically Frank Aaron, Bill Adams, Earl Baker, Tom Banner, Paul <laughs> There were no Oscars in the days of silent screen comedians, but they deserve a special salute for their timeless gift of joy and laughter. In 1937, the Motion Picture Academy presented a special Oscar to that master of fun, discoverer of stars, comedy genius, Max Sennett. <laughs> We all love the movies. Hooray for the movies, they're a group. I love the 
movies. We all love the movies, but we love the movies that move. In the movies today, the words get in the way. They talk, 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 talk. But the clowns of yesterday said all there is to say with a tumble. A stumble, a take, a wink, or a walk. Oh, don't you wish you'd been around when they said it all without a word, without a sound? The great things they could do with just a prop or two. A keystone cop or two. A damsel in distress. Oh, yes, they were inspired. Insane. Absurd. And, and they, they said, said it all without a sound, without a word. And in each simple situation, They'd find something new. Some crazy comic complication. Some new shtick to do. Then they'd extend it and bend it. And oh, how it grew. And soon the cops were coming. And cars were stalling. And doors were slamming. And pants were falling. And knees were knocking. And hats were blowing. Were popping, kids were crying, trains were stopping, pies were flying. Look out, here comes a pie in the face. And ultimately, obviously, inevitably, the chase. A
Remember, living with pollution is living dangerously. I'm so glad we had this time together Just to have a laugh or sing a song Seems we just get started And before you know it Comes the time we have to say So long The couple and the Carolyn Sisters were played by Ted Ziegler and Inga Nielsen.